right now. So he also obviously know how to play around the Azir and play against it. So that's my concern if you say like, okay, well, we'll pick the Azir instead of banning it. It's like, Faker will just go, okay, well then I'll just play Zed. Yeah, I, I don't know what he's going to do. It's He doesn't have the counter pick this time. Though, well, they're so. just going to ban it. So it's going to be Ryze and Azir banned out by Tiger so far. Nidalee and Kindred, so heavy jungle bans from the side of SKT. So they are tightening the noose on that. It also surprises me that the Tigers banned Rise on blue side instead of first picking. The first pick, pick Vlad was just, I think, not a great move right there. Elise is going to be banned okay. alongside the Maokai, which means Echo will be the first selection here for SKT. But did, take Rek'Sai, Rox. Yeah, yeah, just take it. Okay, they're going to take Vlad okay. and Rek'Sai. So okay. now we really don't know what Bengi's going to play. No, no. So in spring, his top three champions were Elise, Rek'Sai, and Graves. Now, his Graves is significantly worse than his Elise and his Rek'Sai, or at least it was when we last saw it, which was February 20th. So it's been a while. He's had some time to work on it, but he has never been a great player when it comes to dealing a lot of damage on teamfights and junglers, especially compared to somebody like Pina. Well, we'll be the Graves for Bengi, so we'll see if he's improved on it any. I still, uh, you know, keep my fingers crossed for the new new every now and then. I know it's not going to happen, but... It'd always be nice to see, and Nami yet again for Wolf had some really good oh chain God, CC Rox, with the bubbles. Please don't do this again. I, I can't take. I can't take this. Uh, okay. There. I guess they decided uh, that the problem was Kuro's Vlad, and not the fact that this composition was sort of objectively bad against Anivia. Now Anivia is still available. Yeah. They can just play Sivir Anivia again. Might just have the yeah just. Have the same exact comps oh and just switch God. the junglers. No! <laughs> oh, God. What, wow. a, what a wonderful world we live in. I just don't understand why they think this is going to work. Like, it's exactly the same problem that we had in the last game. Okay, well, they do they have a Lucian, Lucian this okay. time around. They could have taken Lucian last game, though, so they apparently have decided that the problem was the Ash and the Lucian, but th the thing is, is that at least with the Ash, they had Engage. Now no team has Engage. There's no Engage in Helios. They're just gonna call the hell out of them. <laughs> okay, well, I guess this game is going to be won by whoever gets first Drake. <laughs> I guess that's the reality we live in now. No, first Drake is gonna be Cloud, <laughs> just to extra screw with us. What is going on in this draft? Like, Rox is really committed to this composition, and yes, I understand how it can work, but it's not going to work as long as you keep letting them take Anivia. I, I don't know. I don't know either. It's it's really strange. Like the only form of engage is still like Anivia wall or the tidal wave, which will be blocked by Gor Gorilla. So, and now because there is no Ash on the side of the Rocks Tigers, they they don't have any engage either. Like, they have Flash Brombolt and Flash Unburrow. That's it. That's all they've got. That is that is the sum total of their engage. So it is going to be decided as to who gets to kite because who is on Drake or Baron first. That's that's like how these team fights are going to be won, is just positioning around objectives. We are getting set for a full-on clown fiesta this one, Monty. This draft is so weird. It's just so weird from Rox. Oh, I don't God. know. I don't know why you would do this two games in a row. You see what you're doing, Rox? You've tilted him. <laughs> He's broken now. <laughs> I'm broken. I can't do anything on this broadcast. I quit. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. Well, I will be bringing you guys the solo <laughs> cast action. Hooray. Uh, well, yeah. It's all. Uh, it's all very confusing. All right, well, it's not going to be Cloud Drake first. It will be the Infernal. So living up to your predictions there, Monty, that it'll come down to who can get that Drake control I'm just, first. I'm just so mad about this draft, Achilles. Okay, you have, know. you have last pick also. Why don't you just take Lucian Braum and save your Swain for last pick so at least you can flex the, the Vladimir or threaten to flex it between mid and top lane? I know Smeb can play it. So what is the deal with this early pick Vlad and Swain. Were you really that afraid after they first pick Echo that Swain is going to be taken away from you?
Yes. The answer is no. This draft is just terrible. Look, the composition itself isn't bad. It's bad because they allow SKT to take the things that are good against it so freely. Yeah. Well, we might just have uh, pretty much a replication of last game coming out here. I mean, the, obviously, the only two thing, the three things that we have different are going to be the jungles swapping, and then Prey coming to Lucian. But unless he can get an early lead with that Lucian to get going, then you know we might just see that pick not even matter. He had a winning ma matchup last game too. And what happened was they overextended and got killed yeah. when Duke started. Yeah, he had a really significant CS lead early on. Yeah. It wasn't the fact that they, it, this isn't one of those situations where the draft changed some sort of losing lane into a winning one, so at least you have pressure and can make plays around it. No, it didn't do that. Although I will say that the rec side does allow them to get kills earlier better and maybe dive the turret, so that's nice. Yeah. Uh, but still really weird from the Rocks Tigers. I, I, like I said, I suppose now with, with the Lucian, once you get a, an item or two onto him and you have this Rek'Sai, you can dive turrets very efficiently. You, you may be able to get some kills onto Wolf and Bang, but even so, you could you could kind of do that with the Ash Ultimate and the Graves damage in game number one. So I don't see it as that sig truly significant of a difference. It does look like we had the AD carries take solo experience on the jungle camp, so Krugs for Prey and then Bang taking the Gromp as they were level 2 before their supports. So trying to get them inching out ahead a little bit earlier, but you can see that Bang is already starting starting to struggle against that Lucian up in the top side. He's falling behind in CS. I'm interested to see where Prey is going to go with his build, though. He's going to go for the Essence Reaver first, because we have seen... Uh, some AD carries do that a bit more with Lucian rather no. than the Black Lever Yomus. No, but. you definitely shouldn't do that. I if he does do that, it's going to be really a problem. Like, the late game damage has to come from Vlad and Swain. Um, the other problem that I didn't even mention, which also makes me really worried, is that last game they had the Graves, which meant that at least they had better damage diversity. So, like you're saying, if Lucian does go for the Yomus, Cleaver build. He's not going to be as strong in the late game, and now they don't even have a Graves to balance it out. So SKT has an easier time just building magic resist. Ooh, I don't like this. I don't like. I liked it better with the Graves actually. Uh, the Graves Ash made sense. At least you had engage. At least you had some different types of damage diversity. You didn't really need big frontliners like Rek'Sai because you have a late game Vlad and Swain in theory. Well, Smeb's already going back. Bengi moving over to his Krugs. Just takes it for himself with his own smite. So, Peanut, really early one there. And he's going to lose out on that and just has to exit the jungle. Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm just done tonight. <laughs> I, can't, I can't take... When this, when this kind of crap happens, I might just... I can't deal with it. I just tilt. You sound like you need a glass of scotch and a cigar I right do. Now. I definitely... You need no, all of the... No, 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 no. I need that. See, that implies that I would still be here with those things. I need to leave and have those because I don't want to ruin my enjoyment by watching this particular <laughs> game. Fair enough. <laughs> go to the uh, go to the cigar bar tonight. All right. Well, uh, at least this time, uh, Cry is actually doing really well in lane against Faker. So look, perhaps uh, we could see a different tenor to this matchup. Yeah, he already went back and got a double, uh, you know, a second Doran's ring. So not going to be the tier start like we saw last time, so will be delayed if he does decide to still pick that up, which I think you kind of need to with this Anivia. Yeah, so. and I, I, I'll i be honest, like I just don't know much about the new Vlad versus new uh, Anivia matchup, just because yeah. I've seen it once now. So, uh, I do know that it happened over in the NALCS, but I have not seen those games. Yeah, yet. I heard Froggen played it, but I mean, who else is going to play the Anivia <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> other than Froggen, so, uh, but he did pick up a win with that. Duke, though, getting engaged on on the bottom side. Gets a good chunk off of Smeb, and Peanut's just not going to be able to collapse down on him, so he's just going to keep getting off this free grass. Yeah, and once uh, we see the first recall from Cry, there will be a bit of a catch-up there in terms of uh, Faker's CS also. Yeah, I mean, th this did happen in the in the last game. He did go back early. That time he did get the tier for himself, but he was at a little bit of a disadvantage as far as CS goes, and he was able to make up for it. Uh, but delaying the build this significantly for the Anivia getting tier is going to be interesting to see how that's going to turn out for him because he had a really early full stack rod of ages plus Seraph's embrace completion so seeing this um, late start it could 
adversely affect Finger and how he's going to be going in the rest of this game. Bang going to have to flash away. Nice block there by Wolf to eat the Q, but it looks like he might go down. Has to use the flash of his own with Peanuts here. Bangy arriving just a little bit too late, maybe? That's going to be the exhaust coming out on the Prey, who is now just way too far forward. He's going to go down. That's first blood. Wolf kind of takes that one away from Bang, so that's a little bit questionable. But uh, they turn this one around. The collateral damage not going to be enough to finish off Gorilla. Yeah, and look at the deep wards yeah, that SKT was already able to get into the enemy jungle. The reason why we were watching uh, Duke uh, proxy farming in the bottom side was because Peanut was seen on this really deep ward. In the brush. Go get him. Uh, no. <laughs> that was snuck in quite early here by SK Telecom. So Bengi once again playing around that vision, making it work, has this time he going for just the warding smite upgrade. So it's going to be a smite battle over the raptor there, and it will be Bengi winning it again. Yeah, it does pop it immediately, though, so not going to be too useful. And Faker slowly able to start catching up. But now that he's level 6, he's going to be able to create those big zones against the Vlad, too, which yep. is really nice. We're going to take a look at this again. I mean, just an all-in right here. They try and use that Ignite early on. Then they attempt to proc. They do get the concussive blows, but Heal and Flash used right there to get Wolf out of it. And then Bengi here, he knows exactly where Peanut's going because of that excellent ward. Now, remember, that's where he was seen. And so Bengi was already cheating up into that side because his yep. duo lane was pushed so far forward up the lane that he knew that there was probably going to be a gank right there. I'm just amazed that they didn't get a single kill on even Wolf there from the side of the Tigers. Really looked like that was uh, in their advantage, what with Peanut arriving first, but just couldn't do it. Bray just kind of isolated himself by using that dash into the brush up, you know, north of the lane rather than back towards the base. Yeah, he didn't have a whole lot of options, though, with Bengi there, so tough call to make. In case. Well, I mean, he could have. He didn't use his flash, but he could have dashed backward and flashed away. Yeah, yeah that's true. Well, on the bottom side, here comes Bengi and Smeb. Uh, he's got a good amount of sustain, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. The different move does connect onto Bengi, and there it is, the collateral damage, and a flash forward underneath the tower, and Baker's just going to solo out cry. And uh, I think the stage is set for the rest of this match. I'm pretty sure it is, Achilles. I'm pretty sure it is. These early advantages are going to translate into probably an Infernal Drake and. I don't think there's going to be coming back from that point with Rocks with this composition that they have selected for basically the second game in a row. Let's take a look at that again. Now, Cry has his ghost stop, does get hit by the Flash Frost right after the Glacial Storm, so it takes the crit damage, quote unquote. He just lands and jumps straight in. Yep, okay. I mean, Cry, I don't know whether he had his W up or not right there, because he did. He was able to move after the stun. He had his Flash. Which, well, yes, he did have his Flash. Uh, that was certainly a misplay by Cry, no matter which way you cut it. Yep. But my question is, more importantly, whether, whether or not he had his W up, because yeah. the pool probably would have allowed him to get out of there. But it has a really long cooldown, so it could have been down before that replay even started. Yeah. Well, he had Ignite ticking on him as well, so he might have died in the pool. Uh, well, he would have healed from the pool, too, so it's kind of like... Well, it's also, uh, uh, there's so many questions. <laughs> who, who really knows? <laughs> Either way, Cry's dead, was dead, and SK Telecom are looking quite alive in this match. So, got that going on for us. Yep, at a live SK Telecom. Well, they've been absolutely fantastic since they came back from MSI. At least I was anticipating them to have a slower start at based least. based on their. Uh, limited amount of practice on the patch compared to the teams that were active in Korea for an extended period, like a month, yeah. on the mid-season mage patch. I expected them to get back into it, of course, by the second round robin, but, well, they just haven't even lost a game yet, so that's the world we live in. At least one of the top two teams at MSI has come back and found success <laughs> in their region. <laughs> it's all right, G2 got bottom two, and they're number one, so. Yeah. See, second place, is uh, the biggest loser of all, I guess. <laughs> That's right. So you want to place anywhere other than we just, second. We refer to them as first place loser. Yeah, exactly. And here we go. They even RNG top of their group in China, so. Second place definitely first. Well, SKT going to take the turret on the bottom side of the map. Rox is trying to make some sort of cross map play right now. They know they didn't have any kind of contest. Yeah. But they're you know, putting three people up at that top side, and. That just gives a little bit more time for Bang to shove that wave down into the, into the tier two and maybe get some damage down onto it as well. I mean, this is basically hopeless for Rox. I, I just don't even see how they can possibly win at this stage. I said 
It will be a Cloud Drake next, but I said at the start of this game, it's going to be really whoever has control over the river is who's going to win. And now that SK Telecom has this gold lead, is scaling quite comfortably and does have that Infernal Drake, I don't think they're going to be losing control over the river anytime soon. I have to agree with you. It's in my contract. No, um. <laughs> I actually forced them to put out Achilles' <laughs> contract. Yeah. I went for that one, but I, I made sure to get rid of the you must call me Lord Monty clause. I was like, we got to get that one out of there. I'll agree to 4.3, but 4.4 of the clause is not going to happen. It's all right. The next caster has to have that one. They yeah. won't be as strong-willed as you. Bend them to your will. All right. Well, Smed is here. Oh, okay. Well, he's going to try to jump on a bang. Gorilla's there as well, but he pops on the hunt, has a spell shield, and he's going to be fine. And now Duke's arriving, actually. Parallel Convergence coming out. It's not going to catch a stun. Wolf on the other hand. He get a bit of damage as that Hemo Plague does come down, and Ray arriving, throwing out the culling. will chip down Bengi a little bit, but uh, nothing's going to happen. Why would you flash to apply concussive blows against a Sivir? It's just not going to land. She has spell shield. She will spell shield before the fourth proc happens. He's really mad. He is, clearly. He's an angry gorilla today because using two summoners for that? Uh, not worth it at all. But this is the problem. Rox has no engage. If they want to force fights, it's like, here's a Swain in a brush. Oh, wait. I'm trying to attack a Sivir who has her ult up. Well, I guess that was not successful. To the surprise of none. Your form of engage is Flash Brom. Oh, well, they're going to try something here as the teleport comes in. Pino will get the knock up on the bang. Looks like he's just going to go down. Oh, flashes away, but Flash carry or follow up there by Bray will find the kill. So they do execute on something. Yeah, but you have to use two flashes to do that. And a teleport. And a teleport. And they did it on a lane where they can't take an objective, so actually that kill was useless. Yep, the split push is still coming in there. Now, now, the bot. Yep, you're just going to lose farm now. Uh, you're going to lose several minions and several summoner spells and damage down onto your turret because you made a play in a long lane. This whole situation is dumb. <laughs> the draft was dumb, Achilles. Uh, <laughs> you know what, no one else is dumb. I, I was reading a story earlier today. I, I don't think anything happen right here. Duke's going to get a little damage on this map. But uh, I was reading a story today about this this troll on Twitch who would just go into streams and like donate thousands of dollars to people just to make them like really excited. And then like 30 days later, he would uh, ask for a refund from PayPal <laughs> like to undo the charge. So this guy, this kid apparently comes from like a wealthy family, charges $50,000 oh in God. donations. And now PayPal is saying, well, we're not giving you your money back. That is so great. They're like, I you're a repeat it. offender of this. We're just not going to give you your money. So all of the streamers get to keep the uh, spread the scattered fifty thousand dollars worth of donations, and this kid has to eat it. He's eighteen. Oh my! Well, <laughs> justice has been served. Thank you, PayPal. So that kid is about as stupid as the Rock Tigers draft. <laughs> hey, the Rock Tigers did not give SK Telecom fifty thousand dollars. They gave them one game, which is. Two games. Well, they're <laughs> allowing them to get into the number one spot, well, which will give them more than fifty thousand dollars at the end of the split if they're able to win. That's true, but they, they will not. The Rock Tigers will not solely be at fault for that. And yeah. I, how I feel about this draft is, I do understand again what Rox is doing, and I think in a different circumstance it could be successful. But there was a great answer from SKT, so it's fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, or shoot, fool me twice. What? I was already messed it up. Shame <laughs> on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And that's what the Rocks Tigers should be feeling right now is like, you did this to yourself again. Yeah. Exactly the same thing. Except with <laughs> one different player and I think a worse team composition than you had before. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. Some teams just don't learn from repeat draft mistakes, you know? Well, Rox is not a, a team that we level that against, that, that particular accusation against very often. Yeah. Right, so. uh, well, fortunately, I guess, at least for them, it's, it's about as, as, as fortunate as it can be. Things you have, have Proto Belt down. first. He does have Proto <laughs> Belt first. <laughs> All right, well, that answers our question. Uh, we were asking about the existence of that item in the get first game, so I think it would have been a boon, but at the same time, having that magic resist from the Spirit Visage, very useful against the Cynivia quite clearly, so yeah. I'm not sure this is the right itemization path either. But he is ahead in CS at least this time. Cry has not had the same problems that Kuro had in the lane. 
uh, has been able to stay up early and is now even. So he does have more wiggle room in terms of his itemization, and we'll be going to Spirit Visage next. Yeah. The question is, like, will the Proto Bell just allow for him to make any actual plays happen? Because it's as time I, for some engage, Vlad. Yeah, I mean, as we saw from last Proto game, Belt. let's go, Achilles. Anybody that went in just pretty much <laughs> died. So now he's just going to give a, a fireworks entrance to his own death. I hope I die that way. <laughs> just going out with some fireworks. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'll make sure that arrange that at your funeral. <laughs> we'll have a full. I'll, I'll go to one of those stores in Pennsylvania where they can legally sell fireworks, and I'll drop a couple thousand dollars, and nice. we'll just line your coffin up with nice. these things. Nice, love it. We'll line up so much on your coffin that you'll actually be... Uh, I believe you mean you will line my Viking burial okay. ship so that it lights on fire. That's that's actually... Well, I was going to say you would end up cremated by the end of it because <laughs> there would be so many damn fireworks. That's right, but I'll be in a, I'll be in a Viking longboat anyway. All right. So. All right. We'll send you off down the river in <laughs> Seoul or something. <laughs> All the Koreans would be like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we do have a second dragon now taken by SKT. Yeah, I think that's pretty much going to be the end of the story here. But rocks get the scuttle crab. All right, Ocean Drake up next. And Cry's going to have to do so much work with his protocol. Yep. Oh. I'm intrigued. Figure says no. No winter's bite for you. Oh. Taking a little bit, and Faker's look at him like he just doesn't give a damn. Story of Faker's career, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Uh, it's got to be. I, 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 I wonder how Faker feels. Like this was the team that he had to worry about last split, and now he effectively just doesn't have to care about almost anybody other than maybe Samsung. Yeah, it's it's looking like there are going to be few contenders for SKT with how well they've been playing. And they've been playing super well. They've been drafting well. They've been playing around their win conditions well. Look at the last game, the, their game plan of setting up this Anivia, uh, even picking it into the Vlad Swain combination, having it available, and then thoroughly understanding how to play around it. Yeah. It's been great. Well, three-time world champion figure incoming. <laughs> We'll see. There's a lot of there's a lot of season left. A lot of patches left. Oh yeah, everything everything can really change. We don't know uh, exactly what's going to happen a couple months from now. Because I mean, the season doesn't end until like August or something like that. Yep. Uh, late August will be the time. So it's a bit earlier than last year. So. So yep. Let's see here. SKT now going for this Rift Herald yet again. This may be. Well, Peanut's not their really hands. there to smite it, so this should just be SKT picking it up. Meanwhile. Peanuts just getting taken care of by Duke on the backside. But he has a flash away. He still has that Hebo plug, so he will go down. Peanuts able to finish him off in time. And actually, Wolf on the backside, nowhere to go. Looks like he might get taken out. No, he's actually able to zip out. Here comes Prey on the backside. Coley will finish him off. Now, Faker taking a hell of a lot of damage. Has to flash away. Arden Blaze will help pop him. Now, in that egg form, they kind of just have to say, sorry, man, uh, but we can't help you out. So that's going to be... That was so kills. greedy from SKT. They didn't even have everybody there or a good setup in order to fight with that. They stuck around because they wanted Duke to stand on top of the buff and take it. Uh, they get it, but the cost is actually pretty high right there as they do trade, what, three for one. So Rocks at least able to do more in this game than they were in the last one. But SKT, I think, just really unnecessarily committing to that. It's, there's not, they're not set up already at the buff. So Smeb is able just to get into the pit with his ultimate up for free onto three people. And that should never happen. He should never even be able to close that gap on the objective. But Faker was slow on the rotation to get into the top lane river. And then they're able just to be picked off and slowly whittled away by the area of effect damage from rocks. Yeah. Really odd decision making to go pretty much all in on the Rift Herald. Yeah, so now it's just a thousand unnecessary, gold. just totally unnecessary. Yeah, it's just a thousand gold separating them at this point now. So uh, rocks not necessarily out of this one. Still need to make more things happen. Already two dragons or drakes rather onto the side. God damn that! Already onto the side of SK. Call them drakens and call it the drakens. All right, there we go. <laughs> Well, that particular fight does show that if Rox can somehow get into the, the Drake or the Baron Pit, then they do have, because of the nature of their team composition, if they are able to close that gap through mostly SKT's errors and Faker not being there to cut off their entrances with Wall and with the Glacial Storm, then they are going to be able to do work. Yeah. But 
Uh, hopefully that won't actually happen again if you're SK Telecom. Yep. Well, you see that's going to be the Void Rush coming in here from Peanut from the upside. Turret's taking a hell of a lot of damage from calling thrown out there by Prey. will go ahead and stop them from pushing in any further. Yeah, at least for this wave. They they have they have to go collect the bottom wave at top. some point, but Duke is already there. Smeb having to recall and then run all the way back out into that lane. Duke with that sheen is going to be able to work through this turret with the help of the cannon minion. So pretty easy take there. Just going to elongate that gold differential a little bit more, especially once that mid turret does go down. You can see that, you know, the turrets, the rest of the turrets here from SK Telecom are still really healthy, so it's going to take a lot more work from Rox if they want to equalize that objective count on the scoreboard. Nope. Cry going to go in onto Bang right here. Has found an isolated target. Well, there, he's getting collapsed on the back side yeah. here. He uses the Proto Belt trying to create a little bit more distance, but here comes Wolf and Bangy. Can he land the bubble? TP's going to come through from Smep. Cancels Ooh. it immediately. He should not have even started a TP right there. Vlad was well on his way out with that Ghost and the Proto Belt. A sudden collapse there from SKT. Looked like there may have been an opportunity to deal some damage to the Sivir, but... Been a lot of questionable teleports from Smep so far in this series. Yeah, I have not been... Overly impressed with his performance tonight. Better this game than last game, though. But he looks like he's a little bit panicked there on that TP. SKT will be able to take down the turret on this push. Yep. And uh, Dragon spawning in 30 seconds. I believe he said it was the Ocean Drake. So it is. could just be the third pick up here for SK Telecom. Would give that a, that additional siege potential with every gen that they'll have from the buff. Yep, perfect time to take down that mid turret too, right before that Drake is going to spawn. They yep. still have theirs available. Rox taking a look at this one. Two members of SKT actually going back. With only about five seconds left before the Dragon is going to show up. So wards are down. This is actually a good situation for the Rox Tigers. Yeah, but look at SK Telecom. They're hovering up towards that Baron. Yep, they can make a, some sort of counterplay right here, but there are wards. They are going to send two, yeah, three now. But actually, they're creating more time for Duke to get onto this tier two in the top side. He's getting ready to create that split pressure, and SKT are just keeping Rox busy with the 4v5 at the moment. You can see the pings coming out. Rox identifying that this split is indeed going on, and he should be able to get a good amount of damage in. Yeah, they're trying to make a play onto the tier two. Also, Bang does have to use that ultimate. Yep, on the hunt popped, calling down here for prey. So maybe they can just try to push up into this mid side now that that massive wave clear ultimate is gone. Duke works down the top tier two to about half HP. Yeah, Peanut with no Hydra though, so he's not really going to be able to stop this split push, even though he does have his ultimate up. It's going to be a lot slower yeah. to deal with the Echo. Mm. And he's gone for a lot of utility this game too. Not the Sightstone, obviously, but Locket, and now moving towards the Randuin's Omen instead of actually picking up the Hydra himself. Yeah, Baggy making up for not being able to really build that site stone with the graves. Just going to go for the tracker tonight. It's uh, long, long been standing in his inventory. Hex Trinker's completed as well. Looks like the Yalmuz is getting ready to come in. I'm a bit surprised uh, that he went for the Hex Trinker first, but again, there is so much damage. Yeah. Magic damage from rocks. We don't typically see that built on graves any longer. Phantom Dancer has sort of been the substitute itemization for graves, but this game we will have a chance to look at it just so he has some additional frontline survivability against the consistent DPS coming out of Swain and Vladimir. I'm interested to see what he does for his lifesteal item, should we get to that point, because we've seen Bloodthirsters, we've also, we have also seen the Death's Dance, which seems to be the more staple item for that. Uh, Bloodthirster will probably be better this game uh, against Vlad and against Swain, but we'll see. Um, see what they're going to do. SK Telecom has transitioned this game now after they got that mid turret down into not about the Drake any longer, but about putting down control and wards around the Baron so that they can continuously force rocks to play around a potential early Baron take, which is smart and definitely what they should be doing. As long as they can keep management of that top wave under control, Duke having to walk down into that bottom side. He does have the TP and he will be saving that tier one. So slight lead here for SKT, but I think they're playing it out properly. Yeah, just playing the patient game. Don't want to give any more ground 
Two Tigers since that. A bit of a botch Rift Herald take. So just going to be taking it slow and steady. Haven't seen what the next dragon's going to be quite just yet. We know it's going to be one of these three elements. Yeah, I, I do like that Faker rushed the Morello Nomicon this time around. Yeah, really delaying that Seraphs. Yeah, delays the Seraphs, but I think he realized that in this game that things are a little bit more even, that it's going to be extra important for him to get the Grievous Wounds down if they are going to be team fighting. Yeah. It's going to be the Zonias coming in. Looks like third item here for Kryze. He has the Secret Arm Guard and the Inventory, so uh, I'm not sure how far away he is from that one. Haven't been able to see what, how much gold he has currently on him, but hopefully for his sake he'll be able to complete that pretty quickly. Smeb so far has the cloth armor, so we can guess that he's going to be building one as well this time around. Didn't do it in the last game, and it really kind of cost them. So it would be a nice little swap around on this yeah, itemization. I, I really agree with you on that one. I think that going forward, the Zonia's third here is a prudent choice. Now, SKT just continually trying to get this pick. Oh, well, they find Gorilla. Over the wall comes Bangy. The line not going to connect, but it doesn't matter. Bang finishes him off. Now, Peanut knocked up into the air with the bubble. They should be able to finish him off as he goes over the wall. And they do. Bang finding the kill. And now, Prey all by himself in this mid lane is going to have to back off. Nice picks there by SK Telecom. Now, that's just five minutes of patience paying off. And they push the wave, and then they just immediately double back onto the Baron TP. Very smart, methodical play from SK Telecom. Yep, now going straight over onto this Baron. It's still 25 seconds before Peanut comes up. Four seconds on Gorilla, but the odds of them getting in there in time are pretty slim to none. We can see Smep's going to push up, try to deal some damage. Prey going straight into the face of Bengi, trying to kill him before the Baron Smite comes through. You can see Bengi has to exit Duke as well. He takes a ton of damage, has to snap back with the ultimate. Goes over the wall, though. Can he find Prey? Close the distance. He doesn't have the flash, so he will have to back off. And he actually might go down here. Well. Smeb and Cry pinching around the sides. Bengi and Wolf trying to just retreat in the brush, but now they're going to get found out. Looks like uh, they're not going to get anybody. They're actually going to be able to retreat successfully, but the Baron does not go down. No, it doesn't. And will this actually be a reverse Baron attempt here by the Rocks Tigers? Because they're still all relatively healthy, and SKT just let them into the pit again. Yeah. Uh, they were not playing a very good defensive game. I think they got overly aggressive because they had killed two members. But still, when the Vlad and Swain are up, you can't let them even approach you like that and get you inside of the Baron pit with that AoE. So. Could have been a little bit more cautious right there, certainly from SK Telecom. Are you sure you, you got Peanut and you got Gorilla, but that is not the real threat when you're trying to take an objective right there, and I don't think they played very well to repel the rest of the members of Rocks before they could get into position. Yeah. I mean, they even had the wall down kind of knocking, uh, I forget who it was, uh, knocking one of them in, I think it was Cry. And they didn't collapse on top of him and try to get that pick. I think they should have just completely exited the Baron rather than yep. trying to finish it. See, Peanut, and well, they're not going to be able to find anything. Yep. Nice Prey Seeker, though, to delay Faker's recall. Yeah, Faker's still working on the Seraphs, too. Yeah. Should be able to pick it up on this recall. Sold the Doran's Ring. Yep, there it is. Yeah, should. Well, it's actually not even completed what? stacking yet. That is really late. Well, I mean, the tier was so he did, late. He did get the, a very late tier this game, but even for a late tier, that's late. Yeah. See, it's going to be another Ocean Drake that has spawned. At the moment, that would be the second one for the Tigers. A good amount of regen. Yep, Tigers are playing this well, too. Yep. Oh, but big fight coming out into the midside. Gorilla does still stop the tidal wave with the Unbreakable. It's going to get caught by the bubble, and he goes down. Bangy able to finish him off with the collateral damage. Look like Cry on the run, trying to... Answer with some damage. He layered out the Hemoplank. Did catch a couple members, but the damage is going to be all but negligible here from the side of SK Telecom. Yeah, 800 heal off that Hemoplank, though. And now they can double back and take this out. Without the Hemoplank and without Gorilla's uh, ability to engage, it's going to be a really hard Baron to stop if you're the Rocks Tigers. And they're going to have to face check this. Again, they just don't have vision. Yeah. Peanut's already pretty well down. We'll be getting that regen coming through from the Ocean Break, so they just need to stay out of combat, make sure they get healthy. Cry as well. We'll be working on an HP bar. Smeb's going to get stunned up. The bubble nice comes in bubble. as well. Bang goes straight onto him, trying to take him out, but the Zonius comes through just in time to keep himself alive. Tries to flash away, but he doesn't really create much distance, and he falls. Bengi finding that kill. 
Now Cry coming forward, trying to get onto Bengi and Duke, who are both relatively low. But that's going to be the snap back from Duke with the ultimate. And suddenly, Rocks are just going to have to go ahead and exit up this mid lane. And yet again, another Baron attempt thwarted. Yeah, they did thwart the Baron attempt, but at the same time, SKT continues to get these incremental leads, right? They continue to get these advantages. That time, SKT played it a lot better. Faker was in the dot rush, in the river, waiting to cut somebody off from their team with the wall and try and burst them down. They eventually worked their way through Smeb. And they are going to get more of this burst damage down as the game goes on. It is complete now, the Seraph's Embrace for yep. Faker, so he will have a little bit more frontline survivability as he gets in the face of Vladimir and uh, of Swain. Also see a Hex Drinker now to bang, so really just going hard. They know Prey's damage on this build is going to fall off in the late game anyway, so they're less concerned with the armor and certainly much more concerned with the MR. Yeah, as they should be. I mean, Smeb, though, uh, flashing didn't really do much for him there. He was pretty much a... a Pretty much dead yeah. though, right? So I think he could have just held on to that summoner spell. But uh, used it anyway. See Faker just trying to create more pressure. Still consistently playing around this Baron Pit right now is SK Telecom. But also this mid tier one tower, which still hasn't gone down. Well, this is a, SKT is doing exactly what they should be doing, right? This is precisely what you want to do in this situation. Defend your mid lane tower, constantly put the Baron pressure down, and it's worked. Sure, they haven't actually gotten the Baron yet, but they've gotten multiple kills out of it, and they've maintained their ward presence around the Baron, so it'll just keep happening over and over and over again. The only thing that's saving rocks right now is the fact that they have a Rek'Sai and have the Tremor Sense, because otherwise they would have died a lot more. Yeah. See, though, still good split pressure coming out from Duke, who's been managing these side lanes, the waves, quite nicely. That bottom one getting ready to bounce back a little bit, but he's been working that top one up toward the Tier 2, which has already taken a significant chunk of damage. The TP's gonna come through here from Smeb though. Can they find a big bang? Already taking a lot of damage as the Hemo play comes down and Cry sitting in that Sanguine pool to try to finish him off, but it's not gonna be enough. So they pull the trigger. They're not able to find the kills, but this could open up the Tigers to go for this Baron. Yeah, they took no damage from all of that because of Cry's engage. And Cry is doing much better on this Vladimir this game than we saw from Coral last game. He's hitting actually most of his AoE. Yep. See Bangy chunk out the half HP. They're gonna try to pressure this one out. Parallel Convergence goes into the Baron pit. The wall already used. Baron being whittled down. Duke's gonna go forward, trying to get onto Smeb. But Bangy's taking a hell of a lot of damage from that Swain at the same time. And Faker has to kite back. They do find an opening onto Prey and Gorilla as they go down. A double kill for Bang, but he's just getting jumped on by Pina and Smeb. Still able to find one kill. Meanwhile, on the other side, Cry getting pitched on by four members of SK Telecom. Goes into the pool, but it doesn't matter. He's gonna get burned out by the Ignite. And now it's just Smeb all on his lonesome. No amount of sustain is going to save him from this fate. He is going to go down, gets locked up by the Parallel Convergence, and SK Telecom are going to find an ace. They only lose Bang, and they're going to take the Baron. By the way, Bang was really the hero of that fight, sacrificing himself in the back line, but he did such a huge amount of damage and managed to take out Prey very early on to get the double kill. Meanwhile, the members of SKT, they play respectfully around the AoE. You'll notice how far they spread out right there, especially on that kill at Smeb on the end, giving him a lot of respect. Not even getting anywhere close to his ultimate range, except for Duke, whose job was basically just to keep him pinned in place. So SK Telecom finally find that fight they were looking for. Rocks Tigers also, they let Faker get in here, which is another big problem. Parallel convergence right there at the mouth of the pit. And here comes the Glacial Storm too, getting a lot of work done, cutting off the members. But watch Bang in this fight. Yeah. He flashes on top of Prey with Duke, and then also gets the kill onto Gorilla. Not only that, but he's able to get a couple more auto attacks beyond. You see the crits continuing to come in. Yeah. So Bang right there, just doing work on the back line. And at that point, there is enough tankiness and there is enough sustained damage uh, from the Anivia and the Echo in order to finish off the rest of this fight. But what a great aggressive play there from Bang. You almost never see that where that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 Nine times out of ten, that is a dumb play to make. But in that instance, Bang was an absolute hero. Yeah. Just drawing the attention of so many members of Tigers and still outputting the damage before he went down. So definitely huge play from Bang. The rest of SKT going to be pretty thankful for that performance from him. And now we can see it's going to be an 8,000 gold lead stretching in favor of SK Telecom as they start pressuring in for this Tier 2 tower in the mid side. No Mountain Drakes this game. And they still have that Infernal and the Baron Empowered Minions, so they're going to get some work done. Meanwhile, Duke in the plot side, just splitting off, still has the teleport about to come up, so it'll be pretty safe to stick down there. On the hunt gets popped as they spot Smeb. It's going to be a tidal wave coming through. He will get knocked up by this one. Automatically has to pop the Zonias. 
as he's sitting inside of that glacial storm. Benki, though, kind of in no man's land, has to go over the wall. They're gonna chase with Freddy. He's actually able to find the kill. Meanwhile, Duke goes to the backside, locks up Smav and Gorilla with the parallel convergence. He's not gonna get popped up by the bubble to get a ton of damage here from the rest of SK Telecom as Bang is just trying to fire off these crits, but he's not able to find a target right now. It doesn't matter though, as Duke goes straight into the backside onto three members of Rocks, keeping them all busy, locking up Meetup with that parallel convergence, and then using the ultimate to keep himself alive. Faker pitching down from the top side, looking for the rest of these members. Cry, acknowledging that he is a dead man, just gonna go ahead and sacrifice himself as long as Prey and Peanut can make it out alive. Looks like they'll be able to do so, but SK Telecom are gonna be able to take so much off of this push. Yeah, they tried for that collapse right there, and Rocks responded relatively well, especially considering that the two ultimates, the Sivir ult and the Nami ult, were used basically to catch Smeb, and all they got out of it was for him to use his Zonia's active. So that was actually a pretty good fight for Rox to take, all things considered. But at this point, with a 10,000 deficit, with the Baron buff and all of the Drakes uh, that SKT has, well, really just the Infernal that's actually important. But yeah. Wow. What a push coming in from these guys. Now the Elder Drake has spawned. Rock's going to have to try to fight over that one because if SKT gets it, uh, they're pretty much doomed. No, no I mean, quite. They're, they're already pretty much doomed. I, I actually really am sad now that we don't get to see this Rock Tigers composition against something that isn't Sivir and Nivea, because with the way that Cry is playing this game, which is a lot better in the team fights than Kuro was last time, yeah. you really do get to see a lot of the power or what it could have been in game number one. But I think taking it with even less engaged with the Lucian instead of the Ash, and then the fact that it's easier to itemize against mag four Magic Resist, rather, for SKT at the same time makes this composition uh, just, I don't like it as much as I like the team comp that they had in game number one. And yeah. I like it even less both times when I consider that they allowed SKT to counterpick into it. Yeah. Duly noted, always build the Proto Belt. <laughs> it's making the, dis the difference. It is. Well, it's also Cry is not trying to 1v1 Faker yeah. in the back line. That's, that's another pretty key factor because in the one team fight that looked really good for Rox when they had that pincer going uh, in the mid lane in game number one, it was entirely botched because of how much AoE was just wasted on Faker. Yeah. You can see this is SK Telecom starting up the Elder Dragon. Rox is going to have to try to get a fight here. Duke coming around the backside. Parallel Convergence comes in. Will find two members. Oh. Peanut and Gorilla as they lock him up. Idle Wave coming in as well, but the Unbreakable will go ahead and delete that one. Duke takes a lot of damage, has to snap back with the ultimate to keep himself alive, but he's just running around the backside with the GA getting ready to be blown. You can see Tigers are starting to pitch in on him. The rest of SK Telecom can't really come forward. Looks like they're just going to back off, go for the Elder Dragon, and let Rox just chase Duke around oh, the map. Duke solo! Yeah. Actually dies to red buff burn. Yeah, red buff burn coming through. Bray's still there to try to finalize the kill. That's going to be the TP coming through as well as the Void Rush from Peat Hut. But look at that. Gorilla's already going to fall. Now the Elder Dragon is there. Duke still able to walk out alive against Bray. Wow, that's ridiculous that Duke was able to get out of that one. But like he was in the single digit HP. Well, he died and then the GA revive actually saved him, and he was able to escape after that. But SKT, he also got a good amount of damage in on the prey before he went down. <laughs> well, such is the dead man's plate. Iceborne Echo. Yep. And now the push comes in here from SKT. 50% increased stats on the Infernal and Cloud Drakes, as well as I believe 90 extra damage per hit from that Elder, and you can see these structures are just melting as they continue this split. Duke's all alone in the top side, doesn't have the GA or the uh, ultimate available right now, so he might be a little bit of a, in a precarious spot, but the rest of SK Telecom are just pushing into these Nexus turrets. The first one already whittled down to about 15% uh, here. And it will fall, and SKT are looking to end this game here at the 40 minute mark. That's pushing on forward, slow as can be. Oh, the Zonius comes down for Smeb, trying to stay alive. Tidal Wave not really going to catch anybody, but it doesn't matter because Bang just blows up Gorilla, and he just sits right in the front line on top of Smeb and Peanut, and he just doesn't give a damn. That's a triple kill going over to Bang to finish out this game as the last Nexus Tower falls. Prey going to get caught. He's going to go, no, he's just going to save the fountain. There he goes. Big pop from Faker, takes him out with the E, and that's a 2-0 victory for SK Telecom. They didn't quite hit four times as many kills, but they got three times as many kills this time. <laughs> 21 to 7, 40 and a half minutes on the clock. SKT just look unstoppable. Yeah, they do, but at the same time, credit to the